and welcome to Bite Size Med. This video is on the development of the respiratory system. So first let's look at the final picture of the structures that are going to develop and then we'll go backwards and see how that happens. So what are the structures I'm talking about? The airways, that's the respiratory tree, the lungs and the pleural cavities. So we're going to be looking at the development from the lower airways, starting from the trachea downwards. The trachea divides into the right and left main primary bronchi. These are going to enter the right and left lungs. They then divide into secondary bronchi and tertiary bronchi. The tertiary bronchi divide into bronchioles, which lead into terminal bronchioles, and then into respiratory bronchioles. Each of the respiratory bronchioles leads into a few alveolar ducts, which then lead into alveolar sacs. So this portion is the respiratory zone, where gas exchange takes place, while the rest is the conducting zone, which just conducts air towards the lower airways. Now that was the tree. The lungs are inside the pleural cavities. That's lined by pleura. There are two layers. One layer is sort of stuck to the lung inside, and that's the visceral pleura. And the one that's towards the chest wall, that's the parietal pleura. Now the pleura is mesodermal in origin. Remember those three germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Now let's remove the ectoderm. These two, they form different portions. The airways have different structures in their walls. Now what's actually in the wall would differ depending upon what level of airway we're looking at. Overall, some of the things that can be there would be an epithelial lining, there can be smooth muscle, cartilage, and of course, connective tissue. The epithelial lining is from the endoderm, while all the other stuff is from the mesoderm. So those are the embryological derivatives. So now that we know what's going to form, let's look at how they form. We start at week four. This is the primitive gut tube. From the upper portion, that's the cranial portion, there's an outgrowth. This is a diverticulum, the respiratory diverticulum. The lower or the caudal portion of this diverticulum is going to form the lung bud. The diverticulum is surrounded by splanchnic mesenchyme to form all those mesodermal derivatives we talked about earlier. So the upper portion of this diverticulum would contribute to the trachea and the larynx. But the lung bud, that's going to form the respiratory tree. That's how it is. So the bronchial buds will form bronchi and the bronchiolar buds form bronchioles. So from the lung bud, there's the right and left primary bronchial buds. But before we go any further, you can see right now the trachea and the gut tube, which is going to form the esophagus, they are currently connected. Now that has to close. How? For that, we need to flip it over and look at it from above. So this is the developing trachea in front and the esophagus behind. There are folds that are going to form longitudinally. These are the tracheoesophageal folds. They fuse in the midline to form the tracheoesophageal septum. So now both of them are separate, with a ventral trachea and a dorsal esophagus. Now what would happen if something went wrong here? A fistula. The communication remains. That's the tracheoesophageal fistula. So once the septum forms, the trachea is now separate. These bronchial buds, with their mesenchyme, they push into canals called the pericardio-peritoneal canals. Now these canals are going to form the pleural cavities. So if you look at the name, you can see that they connect the pericardial and the peritoneal cavities. Now as the buds grow into these canals, the communications between these cavities, that has to close. And that happens by folds, which then form membranes. So to separate from the pericardial cavity, there's a pleural pericardial membrane. And from the peritoneal cavities, there's a pleural peritoneal membrane. So that's how they separate. But remember, the pleural cavity is lined. So the portion that's sort of attached to the lung, that's the visceral pleura, that will also develop from the splanchnic mesoderm. The parietal pleura is towards the body wall. So that's from the somatic mesoderm. Now the bronchial buds, they form the right and left primary main bronchi. These are going to branch again and form secondary bronchi. 
Secondary bronchi are lobar bronchi, which means they supply individual lung lobes. The lungs are divided by fissures into lobes. There are three on the right and two on the left. So that means there are three secondary bronchi on the right and two on the left. These secondary bronchi then branch into tertiary bronchi. Now these are segmental bronchi, so they eat supply of bronchopulmonary segment. These segments are both anatomical and functional. There are 10 on each side, though sometimes they can fuse on the left so there might be lesser. And now we're at 7 weeks. So this whole thing was during the embryonic stage of development. Now further branching is divided into stages, and these are histological stages and they overlap. So the division of weeks for each stage is different in different books, so I just picked the one that repeated the most and was the easiest. To understand this, first we're going to bring back the respiratory tree. So from the tertiary bronchi, we have the bronchioles, and then the terminal bronchioles, the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and then alveolar sacs. Now we're going to split them into two each. The first two, the next two, and the alveolar sacs. The stages overlap, so it can't actually be divided like this, but this is just something I did to make it easier to remember. The tertiary bronchi, they form bronchiolar buds which give rise to the bronchioles, and they lead into terminal bronchioles. Now remember that these are histological stages. So these are the terminal bronchioles with their lining, and around that is the mesenchyme which gives rise to connective tissue, and also importantly is where capillaries form. So at this point, the lung sort of looks like a gland, so it's called a pseudoglandular stage, and that's from 5 to 17 weeks, though I think the easier to remember one is between 6 and 16 weeks. Now the next two steps, that's the respiratory bronchioles leading into the alveolar ducts. This is the canalicular stage. So from the terminal bronchioles, we have the respiratory bronchioles, and each respiratory bronchiole leads into a few alveolar ducts. So new smaller canals are forming, and the canals which were formed in the previous steps like the bronchi and the bronchioles, they're going to get wider. So it's all about those canals, that's why it's the canalicular stage. And the capillaries that were formed in the previous stage, they're going to increase now. So this is from around 16 to 26 weeks. The alveolar ducts, they lead into sacs called the alveolar sacs. This is the terminal sac stage or the saccular stage from 26 weeks to birth. These alveoli are primitive. Now the lining flattens, so the cells are flatter. These are the type 1 cells. Why is that important? Because they're needed for gas exchange. The capillaries start to come really close to the alveolus. So it makes sense that the type 1 cells are thin to make it easier for gas exchange. There are also type 2 cells. Now these form surfactant. That's important because once air enters the alveoli, there's an air fluid interface. That can create surface tension, which can cause small alveoli to collapse. Surfactant is a phospholipid. It lines up inside each alveolus and reduces the surface tension. It gets synthesized during this stage, but just synthesis isn't enough. We need a sufficient amount so the levels increase with gestation. So you'd think we'd be done here, but no, these are primitive alveoli and they have to mature and proliferate. We need lots of alveoli. There are millions at birth, but we need millions and millions more. So that's the alveolar stage from birth to eight years where they mature and proliferate. So that's the four stages of lung maturation, the pseudoglandular stage when it looks like a gland, the canalicular stage when it looks more like a lung, the saccular stage when the alveolar sacs form, and the alveolar stage when the alveoli proliferate. And no, we're still not done yet. For gas exchange, we need circulation as well. So what happens at birth? During fetal life, the lungs are filled with fluid and the alveoli are collapsed. The pulmonary vascular resistance is high. The heart has shunts, like the ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale, to bypass the lungs, because the oxygenation is being done by the placenta. At birth, the baby takes a breath. The lungs fill with air and the fluid gets resorbed. The pulmonary vascular resistance drops. The cardiac shunts close and blood flows through the lungs, 
So now their function of gas exchange begins. And that is how the respiratory system develops. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.